Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Eastern Iowa Community College, Clinton Regional Development Corporation collaboration, where we're interviewing human resource professionals and educators regarding their response to COVID-19. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode. As always, I'm Andy Sokolovich, the Vice President of Economic Development for the Clinton Regional Development Corporation, and I have Chris Caves with me. Chris, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi there, Chris Caves, Workforce Innovation Coordinator and Corporate Trainer for Eastern Iowa Community Colleges. Smooth. I love it. Well, I'm excited today to have a friend. I call you a friend, Amy. I've known you for several years. Her name is Amy Hamill. She works for UFP Technology, serving the role as a human resource professional. Amy, thank you so much for joining us today. Sure. Thank you for having me. Amy, how's it going? How have you been responding to this COVID-19 pandemic? Well, it's, I think it's going as, as good as it can be expected. We've just kind of been rolling with all the changes. I think it's every day is something different and we just um, I feel we've been moving along quite well. We have a good team here and we have a lot of communication going. So we just keep um, plugging away and looking at all the new initiatives that are coming through and making changes that kind of fit what we need to do here. So tell me a little bit about UFP Technologies. What do you actually do? You're located in Clinton, Iowa, but many people probably don't know you exist because you're kind of nestled back into what we call Manufacturing Meadows 2, right off of Manufacturing Drive. Yes, we are hidden. Some people know to turn at the big painted rock off, Bluffs, off Bluff yeah. Boulevard. Um, but we are hidden, but we have been here over 20 years. Some people know us by molded fiber, um, but we're, our name is actually UFP Technologies and we're a manufacturing plant. We do specialty packaging for all different industries, uh, retail and medical, uh, computer technology, so wine distributors. So we make specialty packaging for all those industries and we employ just about um, just about 75 people here right now, so um, all in the local area. So um, we work Monday through Friday, so we have they have their weekends off. But it's kind good. Of our, so yeah. you're you're an essential employer. So yep. what's talk to me a little bit about morale and what are you doing to kind of boost morale or encourage people to have high spirits, even though stuff going on outside the four walls of that plant are probably a little chaotic. Yeah, so a big thing is communication. I think, you know, everyone's coming into work and they're seeing things on the news and wondering well, what are we doing to protect to protect them at the plant. So, you know, just communicating back and forth with them about what, you know, what actions we've taken to make sure that we're, you know, putting their safety first. Um, and then you, um, they love food here and quizzes and themes and stuff like that. So we do a lot of theme days and um, celebrations as far as, you know, we'll have quizzes for different things. We've kind of recently thrown um, COVID-19 questions in there and then, you know, some of the prizes that they get to win are toilet paper and hand sanitizer and Lysol spray, but very creative. I gift like cards. Uh -huh. and, yeah, but um, you know, and then also we've been, I mean, we've just been doing a lot of stuff. I would like, I'd like to think and say that morale is really is, is good. I, you know, we have good days and bad and the situations always can determine it. But for the most part, I think people are, you know, they recognize that we're doing a lot to, you know, try to keep them motivated and keep spirits up. We're catering in um, once a week at the end of the work week, uh, lunch from somewhere local, which is nice because they're, uh, last week we did Holly's Dogs, for example, and a lot of people hadn't had that art yet. So that was cool to, you know, yeah. be able to kind of sample all those um, hot dogs. And then, um, you know, just we have grab and go um, foods out there, like for just when they're breaking and, you know, different times. And yeah. like I said, just um, trying and we have music. You were here. We have music going through the plant. So there's a nice, you know, there's a good energy going. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah, so I think that's fun. So, Chris, I'll say a shout out to Holly's dogs. If you have not had the peanut butter <laughs> and jelly hot dog, they're good. It seemed out, my friend. That first, that concoction, I was like, no way. Then I bit into it and I was like, yes, way. This is going to be a staple in Andy's diet moving forward. <laughs> also, you know, I've known Amy for, for several years, like I said in the intro. Uh, when she first joined UFP Technologies, and you can tell that she got very active on social media. She started highlighting some of the employees, kind of developing that culture, sharing that narrative. So kudos to you, Amy, for making sure that that stuff gets shared with the general public because often there's a lot of great things that are happening within the four walls of our manufacturing facilities, but guess what? Nobody ever hears about them unless they work there. You've done a great job of promoting it. So 
Good job. Oh, thank you. We have a great team, so it's easy to promote them. There's a lot of really good people working at UFP. So. So you're doing things to boost morale. You're responding in kind based on state and federal orders like every other manufacturer. I'm going to turn this over to Chris because she has some questions regarding workforce. Okay. Yeah. First, Amy, I just wanted to ask a question. Um, uh, I love to, to uh, talk about the successes and things that have bubbled up in response to a major disruption like this. And I wondered if there were any general themes um, that you've seen amongst your current employees where they're adapting and they're thriving and maybe that's some momentum to build on for the future. What kind of themes or attitudes have you seen from your team? Um, I, you know, I think just curiosity. I, I, I can't stress enough just the communication and just the curiosity that they want to know what's available to them. You know, we've went through all different types of channels. You know, we hear something from Iowa Workforce or from CRDC and or, and then internally through our corporate offices and just being able to promote and share that information, whether it be through table tents or the break room TV display that's circulating or our weekly meetings, but just really sharing that because I feel like the more information they get, the better equipped they are to make decisions about, um, you know, their childcare situation. You know, that was a big one that came up here. Some, you know, these are, um, work you know some of our employees have um, spouses or significant others that work somewhere else that's also essential so when schools are out trying to figure out where they're going to be going and you know right away we had great partnership that gave us some tips and um, resources to reach out to and so that was really nice to be able to have that and I think that's having that information re readily available um, was just it was really appreciated appreciated from people and I think that it's something now they've come to expect. Mm -hmm. Amy, we've heard from other manufacturers in the region. Um, some of them still have workforce needs where they're, they're doing some hiring, and some are projecting out where the, the uh, demand for new employees is going to be ramping up. I represent community colleges, and I, can, um, uh, I wanted to ask a question from the perspective of either a high school graduate or a college graduate, Amy. What wisdom, right, or optimism can you give a student that may be interested in pursuing employment opportunities within the manufacturing industry in the short term or even six months out? That's a great question. I think uh, manufacturing is sometimes overlooked by, you know, both college and high school um, students. And I think that there's so many opportunities within manufacturing that that's just the wisdom there is just to understand that it might be an entry level position. It might be a position that you're doing, you know, when you're home for summer break or right out of high school, but there are quick ways to promote. And this is, you know, of course I want them to come to UFP, but this is in every manufacturing industry that I've been in. I've seen this, that, you know, if you are, if you have a strong work ethic and you're, you know, you have good attendance and you have a desire to learn and you, you know, are, you, you don't like to stay idle because manufacturing has a lot of moving parts, then I think, you know, that's quickly recognized and it's, a, there's a very quick um, career path for people in manufacturing to move up, you know, into different roles that maybe they didn't know were possible and, um, and you can make very good money in it. So I think that that's, you know, there, it's not the industry that should be like, you know, oh, it's a, that's on my back burner. I think it's an industry that should, I mean, we're essential and we are, yep. you know, there's a lot of different opportunities there and you're using your mind and you're, you know, you're making things that are important. So I think that's the wisdom I would give. Amy, just one last question from me. What advice could you give um, either high school, college, or even adults who were displaced workers during this uh, COVID-19 um, virus disruption? What advice can you give them right now if they're at home? What could they be doing uh, to, to re-engage with the workforce? Uh, you know, I think there's places hiring. I know that for sure. So if they're, you know, if they're wanting to work to just, you know, reach out and, and find those places that are hiring work, you know, we have a need right now for a few positions. Um, but I think just making sure that they're staying, uh, you know, active and, uh, you know, keeping their resume up to date, keeping their skills in check, getting up. I mean, I think just, you know, getting in the habit of kind of staying in routines and things, because I think so quickly we can slip back, you know, I see it, I shouldn't say this, but I feel like I see it with 
my school age children sometimes, you know, just with, with that side. So I think just, you know, keeping up and staying with, um, you know, just routine of things, making sure you're still getting up and, and having, um, you know, trying to be aware of what's going on and taking care of yourself so that you're staying healthy. I agree. I think that's great advice. You know, I got that same advice from my grandfather at a lovely age of like 82. Uh, he said, just never stop moving, right? Get up, make your bed, even in retirement age. And I think a lot of that applies right now. Just yeah. keep going, keep going. It's, it's like, what's that? Uh, Dory, finding Dory, keep swimming, keep <laughs> swimming. I think that apply. Mm -hmm. Get up, apply some short-term goals, whether it's your make your bed or go out for a jog, um, but continue to progress and better yourself as an individual and a professional. I was going to ask Amy one thing, um, you know, as people respond, uh, you know, to a, a, uh, an emergency like this, Amy, what are some of the characteristics you like to see in um, your employees? Uh, and my point is, no matter what industry you work in, Amy, you can take those parts of your personality, those skills, and transfer them into a new industry. What are some great skills that you feel people have if it's about decision making, if it's about, um, like you said, being prompt, being accurate, being honest? What are some of those transferable skills that you could see someone taking from one industry into another and blending that in their workforce? I would say, I mean, aside from some of those, you know, those other skills, um, you know, prompt and detailed, but you know, maybe just being humble and being appreciative of what they have and of what's being offered. I think it's very easy to, to think, you know, I want more or we're not doing enough, but to, it's so nice to be able to walk out and, ha you know, and hear, I mean, and we don't, we don't do it for the thank you so much, but to hear people, you know, be appreciative of what we are doing and recognizing that, hey, um, this is, you know, out of the ordinary, but um, like, for, for example, the pandemic, it's out of the ordinary, but we're all doing the best we can and trying to, you know, do what's right. And, um, you know, if we make a mistake along the way or if something was missed that, you know, we're quickly, you know, re, you know, resetting and fixing that. And I think just being able to acknowledge that um, just as, you know, everyone, everyone just can, you know, have a little patience, I guess. Yes. Know, to work with yeah. That. So, patience and um and trusting i think it's important to trust your employer to, as well as to trust your employees and i think um you know when you start doing that that's one of those traits that just carries a carries a lot of weight yeah. mm -hmm. yes that's fantastic thank you i love patience and trust i mean that's huge right mm -hmm. uh, when we talk about engagement those are two big things and uh, if more people would have patience right now, we get through this just fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm very confident that the future for us is bright. All right, Amy Hamill, thank you for joining us from UFP Technology. I sure. appreciate it. Chris, You're it's welcome. a pleasure as always. Hey, it's my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. I've been your co-host, Andy Sokolovich, the Vice President of Economic Development from Clinton Regional Development Corporation. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for this quick episode. I hope you're finding some value and taking away some insights from this material. We'll be creating some more of these videos, so stay tuned.